Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. And my Tyrannus has multiplied. I now have Tyranni, Tyrannuses. Anyway, so uh, no, so Pablo uh, got a QX7. What we're gonna be doing today is going through setting it up, and there's a few steps involved if you've never done this before, and you can do it the way I do it or not. This is just how I go about this. And the first thing that you're going to want to do, in my opinion, is go ahead and update your firmware before you do really anything else to OpenTX 2.2. So let's dive into that and we'll show you what that's all about. Here we are at open-tx.org. This is where we're going to download the companion and the, and the firmware. So the most recent release of OpenTX is 2.20. Click on that and scroll down to the bottom here now. There's this SD card content, so you need to take, download the SD card content files, and you want the whichever radio you're using, which in this case is the X7, download the zip file. I already have it installed, but you also need the OpenTX Companion 2.20 Windows installer. And once you have this stuff downloaded, you're gonna move the contents of the SD card there's a couple of different ways you can do this. I just have a micro SD card reader connected to my computer. So we're gonna take from the zip file, basically everything and copy it into the root of the SD card. And uh, it's not that big. You don't really need a big micro SD card with your Tyrannus, um, just enough for the SD card content. And if you install the Amber sound pack, but I don't, I don't even think you need a gigabyte. I'm not sure exactly what, and I don't think you could buy SD cards less than a gigabyte now anyway. So if you've got an old one laying around or whatever, um, it doesn't have to be a fast one. You could just kind of use whichever one you want. All right, so once you've got all that copied, you want to go ahead and put your SD card into your Tyrannus. So you're going to hold the lower trim buttons in and power on the radio, and you're going to be in the bootloader mode. Then connect your USB cable. And on open, to, you should see your Tyrannus pop up and the Tyrannus memory card pop up. Next, you're gonna to go to settings. So a um, couple of things you wanna look for in here, mainly because we're planning on using a uh, multi-module with this Tyrannus so we can control things like toy quadcopters as well. We're going to make sure that multi-module is checked. And then because we only, uh, we only fly quads, we're gonna use no heli, which just removes uh, a page or two from the menu for collective pitch helicopters. Rename this to Pablo. Yo. And choose your language here. And if you want to add a custom splash screen, you could. Uh, choose your default stick mode. We fly mode two. And I changed the default channel order to AETR because this works better with um, some of the toys that we might bind to this. If you're flying like typical beta flight or whatever, I think the default is TAER. But if you're going to be using the multi module, you can change this. If not, no big deal. Now that all the settings for our firmware load are set, we're gonna hit okay. Click this button here, and I wish these were labeled with words because I always have trouble finding what I need, but you're gonna click download, and we are going to check for updates. No, uh, so I've got the most recent version loaded here. We're gonna go to download firmware, and you can save that wherever you want. And then we're gonna go to, on the left here, we're going to write the firmware to the radio. We're going to hit write to TX. And the firmware should be updating. And it looks like it's done. Wait till the close lights up and then click it. I wouldn't click this X or click here. I don't know if it matters, but I flashing done. So we're going to hit close and we should be up to date. So let's check it out on the radio. One of the other first things I want to do here, um, because I do have this problem on my QX7 that I've had for about a few months now, is I use double A's in mine. I know that's not necessarily ideal, but it works for me. Um, the, I don't like the battery train here. My double A's tend to want to pop out. Now, on this version, which is a little bit newer, it seems like the battery tray is a little bit better, that that's it's a little bit tighter of a fit. So um, you may not have to do this mod, but mine, the batteries want to pop out. The other problem I have is my the battery cover, I feel like wants to always slide off too easy. So what I did on mine, and we're gonna go ahead and do with this one, is we're gonna get a little piece of foam here. 
and some hot glue. And we're just going to put the hot glue on the back of the foam. And then stick the glue to the inside of the battery cover. And what this is going to do is help keep the batteries from popping out and provide a little bit of tension to help keep the battery cover in place as well. There you go. So that's done. So we're also going to go ahead and you'll see how I set mine up. I, um, the only thing different I might do is we do like to use the iRange X multi-module so we can control like E11 whoops or other toy quads as well. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can ignore anything that I say during the setup process to related to this. But uh, if you do have one of these, I'll show you how this works as well. So we're going to get the module installed. So you just take the door off, push these two tabs in, comes right out. And you see you got these long pins in here. And they're pretty long, so you don't want to kind of bend these. So when you put your module in, don't force it. It should drop in super easy without you really having to push on it. I'm going to have to push on a little bit to lock it in. And there we go. That's installed. So we've got the multi-module option enabled in our firmware. So we should go, we should be able to go ahead and use this thing. So what we're going to try to do is bind it to an 11 whoop and see what's going on. Model name, you can call it whatever you like. So if you're using something like this with a multi-module, we need to go down to right, internal RF. And if you were doing a normal bind to a free sky receiver, like an Exxon Plus or whatever you might be using, you wouldn't really have to do anything here. But because we're trying to bind to something using the multi-module, I'm gonna turn the internal RF off. And I'm going to turn the external RF to, to multi and for the easier one, one, it's going to be the Bayang or Bayang, however you say that. And then we're going to go down to, we're going to go back and we're just going to go over to buy. So we will turn on quadcopter and hit bind and let's see if she binds up. Now, something else I do because, um, yeah, there's no arm switch on a toy quadcopter. Normally I would use this on a regular quad for arm and disarm. So I'm going to go into special functions and I'm going to create a, on this switch here. So I'm going to, with this select, I'm just going to flip this switch. So it chooses that one and we're going to override channel three, which is the throttle. And we're going to set that to minus 100, minus 150 and hit the checkbox. Um, that way, basically when, basically it's like a, disarm switch so if i accidentally have the throttle up uh with the quadcopter on it won't arm you have to flip the switch put the switch up throttle's dead so if i need to cut it or disarm it i can just flip this switch and it's dead that kind of will help save you a little bit next i'm gonna um this came set up with the in mode two uh but the throttle ratchet is active so i'm going to show you how to disable that So first thing you're gonna do is take all your batteries out. And uh, there's a screw down here you're gonna take out. And we're also gonna do this without the module installed. So take the module out if you've already installed it. There's four screws, one, two, and three and four. So we're just gonna take these screws out. The little connector for the battery tray. And now that you've got your clamshell opened up, Basically what you want to do, here is our left side gimbal. And it's already done on this one, but the one I got, the left stick was self-centering. So what you have to do is back this screw all the way out if your left stick is not is self-centering and you need it to be loose. And the other thing we're gonna do while we're in here is get rid of the, the ratcheting. So there's two of these bridges. The one with the little indent in it is the ratchet one. So if you want to remove the ratchet, you back that one out. Just back it out far enough so you can't feel the ratchet in the stick anymore. And then the other one is smooth tension. So you just want to tighten that one down, the one without the indent in it, until the stick feels like you want it to feel in terms of smooth. This tighter will make it a little bit more tension and it'll I think that feels pretty good right there. 
There we go. And now we can put it all back together. And we should have a smooth stick. So now we've got a nice smooth left hand stick, which is what we're looking for. So let's get the screws back in and we'll button this up. And we're about done for now. So thanks for watching guys. Hope that was helpful. You know, hope this video helps you out. Got some DVR footage coming up, so stay tuned, enjoy, and see you next time.